uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to uh, Maria and she's going to go a little bit more yes, insight before. into yes. what is negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, saya just nak uh, share sedikit sekarang kita akan uh, slowly ya yeah, akan pergi dengan lebih detail ya yeah, explore dengan lebih detail apa itu negotiation ya yeah. dan sekiranya aspek-aspek ini tidak ada di dalam negotiation anda it is not in your negotiation therefore negotiation itu selalunya um, tak akan berkesan lah ya yeah. it will not give you the goals that you want to achieve so please take a lot of notes ya yeah. uh, we will we will do our very best to reflect uh, to the real scenario. So for me, all my life, most of my time, yeah, um, my career is in banking. Yeah, and it is really scooped down in sales. Yeah. So from, from the very beginning, I was in mortgage. And then after that, um, I was in uh, wealth advisor, become the financial consultant. And then terus last sekali dalam OSK Investment Bank, taking care of premium banking. Yeah, our clients that have minimum investment of $1 million, yeah. And then after that merge, yeah, bank ni memang tak habis-habis merge. Yeah. Saya bermula daripada Afin, masuk Southern, then SBB Mutual, and then uh, CIMB, lepas tu RHBEZ, lepas tu. Semuanya bank, 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 bank lah on people's money. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here is a lot of negotiation being happened uh, that we have to overcome. First, because we are in sales. And the other thing is we are taking care people's punya investment. Yeah. So coming back to drawing board, so what I'm going to do is saya akan relate dengan saya punya dunia. Yeah what I've gone through, what I've done, yeah, and Haliza as well. And do your very best to connect it with your reality. What is the point that bila kita share ni, anda boleh guna pakai. You can actually use it in your reality. You have the right to copy what we share today. Yeah? So, the first thing that I want to share with all of you is, let's read together, my friend. Look on, on the slides. Yeah? Um, negotiation features. In any negotiation, yeah, I think Haliza have shared earlier, bila anda nak negotiation, mesti ada berapa, mesti ada berapa orang? Two. Two, two or more. Betul, I mean. Must have two. Yeah? Even though you are negotiating with yourself early in the morning, deciding, yeah, uh, apa nak pakai hari ni, anda tengah negotiate dengan diri anda. Ada anda yang di depan cermin, dan ada anda yang di dalam cermin. Jadi dua. There's always got to have two. Eh? Uh, tak boleh seorang-seorang. Eh? So, um... When you are negotiating, first thing you need to identify the mesti ada dua. Eh? Take a look at the slides. Eh? Please take a look. Minimum two people. It has to have minimum two people. Eh? Kalau you cakap seorang-seorang, you nak negotiate dengan clients, tapi clients tak nak negotiate dengan you, there will be no negotiation. Alright? And of course, eh, uh, the next one is predetermined goals. Eh? Bila ada negotiate tu, you know exactly dah apa yang you nak achieve. Okay, kalau sakat, okay, jom kita bincang-bincang dulu. That is not a negotiation. That is just talking. That is small talk. Right? Kalau you tak boleh, kita bincang dulu. No, no, there's no such thing of, of that, yeah, negotiation. You mesti dah tahu apa goals you nak achieve. Coming back to point board, there are nego features. Tadi saya dah cerita, dia kena ada dua. Dua people, kan? Minimum. Kalau tak ada dua, maknanya itu bertepuk sebelah tangan. Ha? Pernah bertepuk sebelah tangan ataupun main jongkat-jongkat seorang-seorang. Okay, if you want to nego, macam main jongkat-jongkat, dia kena berdua. Kalau tidak, dia tak balance. Macam mana dia datang, apa kena-kena dengan jongkat-jongkat? When trying to say negotiation, if you want to tango, it, it takes two to tango. Dah si tango pula. Okay, so in any negotiation, kalau you dia nak datang, orang lain yang terlibat tak nak datang, it's not going to happen. Alright, next. Predetermined goal, ya. Yeah? Predetermined goal, ya. Saya letak kat sini, uh, you dah decide dah goal berapa you nak achieve. Contoh eh, kalau saya bagi contoh saya eh, um, when uh, a lot of people, say, saya cerita dalam dunia sales saya, uh, when some of the sales people ataupun the premier banking uh, advisors eh, decided to resign, all their customers, all their clients akan diberikan kepada um, premier bankers yang masih available di bank tersebut. Eh. So, um, all the portfolios, we have to review. So, when we want to visit yeah, our ex-colleagues punya clients, we need to have predetermined goal. Kita dah tahu dah. Jadi, saya bagi contoh. Eh. Contoh. Eh. Um, berapa nak suruh dia invest lagi? Berapa nak suruh dia maintain? Yeah, berapa persen? Um, new funds that we like to propose. Okay. Jelas, eh? you dah kena ada fix tak kira apa negotiation. Negotiation nak naik gaji pun you dah kena decide gaji nak naik berapa. 
30 ringgit, 50 ringgit. Kalau 30 ringgit kita beli negotiation. Dapat. Tapi kalau 300, 3000, ah yes, negotiation. Predetermine your goals. What do you want? When do you want it? Mesti dah ada. Boleh ya? Okay. Now, expecting outcomes. Eh? Expecting outcomes is belum you masuk dalam dalam negotiation tu. Ini, ini baru features. Belum proses. Ya Allah. Proses tak masuk lagi. Baru features ya. Kena ada ciri-ciri ni. Baru negotiation tu betul. Now, next is the third one is outcome. Outcome ni, anda dah boleh, boleh um, kind of like visualize, ya? anda boleh, dah, dah boleh um, predict ya? apakah reaksi yang akan berlaku. Contohnya, kalau saya nak jumpa klien, ex-klien saya, klik saya tu, kalau dia punya portfolio rugi, saya dah boleh nampak dah. Dia akan akan complain, ya? A complain that we gonna get from them. Ya? They might want to withdraw their investment. Right, they will um they will decide to take business somewhere else. So negotiation ni dia bukan hanya an, dua melibatkan dua orang, bukan hanya tahu goal yang anda nak achieve. Anda dah boleh visualize, okay, with this these goals that we want to achieve, meeting up with these people, I reckon saya jangka, kami jangka ini yang akan berlaku. Anda dah boleh bang jangka apa yang akan berlaku. Jadi, my dear friends, when we Life, bukan kind like we dah uh, jangka kan ya, uh, list down things that might happen, kita dah boleh plan the resolution. Yes, consensus. Eh? consensus eh? Maksudnya di sini, bila you dah boleh jangka outcome-outcome yang belakang belak bakal berlaku, but at the same time you boleh juga, okay, tapi kalau saya recommend a new fund that can actually reduce their profit, they might Stay with us, yeah. Stay with us. Okay. Knowing that things that might happen, then you will plan. Apa resolution nak buat ni? Kita boleh propose for bond to them. Dana bond. We can propose them to okay. Um, switch their fund. We can propose to. Maintain the fund for another few months. A longer duration, different duration. Yeah? Yes. Nampak dia punya? Okay, uh, saya nampak di situ Fadil. Yeah. Goal boleh berubah ikut keadaan. Ha, macam ni Fadil, ni pada pandangan saya. Eh. Ni pada pandangan saya, saya tak tahu lain. Goal saya, my goal, kalau dia cerita pasal ni tadi. Eh. When I meet up with the, the clients, at least... I need the clients to maintain investment with my organization, not to take their investment somewhere else. And that goal is not going to change. Okay? So, di sini, apa yang saya boleh share pada anda, ya, goal tidak boleh diubah. Saranan saya, tidak perlu ubah goal anda, ubah strategi anda. Kalau anda tukar goal anda, bermakna, anda tak ada apa yang nak negotiate because you can always change your goals. The reason why kita negotiate sebab kita nak achieve kita punya goals and the person that we are negotiating is achieving their goals as well. That is what we do. Itu saranan saya. If you keep on changing your goals, it is not negotiation. It's more of you uh, accommodating, compromising. And in negotiation, yeah, kita kalau kita asyik compromise and accommodate at all time, at the end of the day, you will never really achieve your goals. Because in negotiation, yeah, saya akan cerita juga nanti, is win-win. Maknanya, I get my portion, which I think is best for my organization or for myself, and you get the goal, which is important for you and your organization. Ha. Tapi saya tak pastilah, kalau ada orang lain, boleh bertukar goal. Clients boleh bertukar goal mereka sebab mereka ada goal mereka sendiri. Tapi bila saya berjumpa dengan klien saya, contoh dalam situasi ini, saya dah ada goal saya. My goals and my organization goals. But first, make sure the client stays. Because now it's going to be a new person assisting these clients with our banks. And of course, our goal is to make sure they maintain their investment with us. Not to take away their business somewhere else. Yang okay, kalau saya pada pandangan saya yang berubah mengikut keadaan ialah strategi. Thank you, Ainil. Eh? 
Tukar strategi anda. Improvise strategi anda. Unless you find that the goals is not suitable for you lah. After a while, is it? Ini bukan kita punya goal. Then it will relate again to what is it that is your vision and mission. Eh? Tapi kalau memang this is your vision and mission eh, that you want to achieve, your goals have to maintain. And if you are unable to achieve your goals, you change your strategy. Uh, maybe the proposition yang anda share semasa negotiation. Uh, maybe um, some terms and condition yang anda boleh tukar. Tapi you still get your goals without jeopardizing yourself and them. That is negotiation. Uh, yeah? It, now, coming back to your negotiation features. Kat mana saya tadi? Resolution and consensus. Oh, sebelum saya terambil masa you punya tea break. Eh? Uh, so, this is connected. Yeah? So, when you know the outcome, you dah boleh predict, you dah boleh rangka apa yang kita boleh saran kepada klien kita ni supaya goal kita tetap dapat di maintain. Because you dah nampak dah, ni kalau dia tak, dia punya bond dah dekat 10 tahun, tak dapat income, kita janji 5%, rupanya dapat 2%, dia mesti akan naik naik atas meja, jadi hantu kat situ juga. Dia, I put 50 million! Ha, you get ready lah. Okay, so that is resolution. You dah ready yourself. This is what's going to happen, this is my proposition. Okay, so terus, next. Nego features tu, kalau anda lihat di slide sebut dia, dia tulis itu, parties willing to modify their position. Okay. Willing to modify. Now, maksud modify di sini ialah it could be terms and condition, it could be uh, the the framework, the duration of time. Ya, tadi Ustaz cerita pasal timeline. Ya. Kalau mungkin dia minta dalam masa seminggu, you need another one more week. But the outcome is still the same. This proposal has to be prepared. Ya. Tapi anda request another one week. Okay. Now, coming back to negotiation features ini. Kalau the parties that you are meeting up tu, ya, yeah, okay, contoh eh, saya jumpa dengan klien saya, dia pun menjadi, I don't want to be, I don't want to stay with you, saya tak nak, ah. dia tak nak modify langsung eh, dia nak, dia tak nak ada apa-apa resolution, dia tak nak ada solution ni, again, negotiation is about coming to an agreement and proposing the best solution for both parties. Kalau dia langsung tak nak ada give and take, One, what you can do is, you say, okay, let's stop here first. We discuss further for our next meeting. You can do that. Eh? So in negotiation, you have to be ready to give and take. Give and take without jeopardizing you punya goal. Itu you kena remember. Okay, give and take. Sebab kalau you, you langsung tak nak, you je nak menang. Oh, tak boleh negotiate. Tak guna lah negotiate. Buang masa. Because you just want to get what you want. Others unable to get what they want. That is not negotiation. Yeah? Okay, itu maksud dia. Uh, willing to modify. Okay, mula-mula dia nak untung dalam masa 2 bulan uh, 40% and then you say okay, instead of 2 months, stretch it out to half a year, you get every month uh, 10%, 10%, 10%. Is that point with you? Uh, contohnya, ya. Yeah. And you get another additional 10% because you're willing to wait for 6 months. Nampak, eh? Di situ maksud dia, eh? Modify ni. Uh, we are sometimes the middle person. Okay, when you are the middle person, you are not the authority yang buat uh, decision. That negotiation is not impactful. Tu je saya boleh cakap. Okay. Step to negotiation features. The person that you're negotiating with must know. Eh. Kalau tadi, eh, dia must know. Eh. The purpose. Eh. purpose. Sebelum, eh, sebelum saya berjumpa dengan clients, eh, uh, clients ex um, colleagues saya ni, I will email them and speak to them on the phone. Yeah? Tell them what is my purpose. You can share, update your portfolio. Okay. Um, Re-strategize, restructure your portfolio if needed. And uh, we would like to get more feedback and identify new investment goals from you. Kita bagi tahu tiga-tiga ni. Okay, maknanya they have, if they don't understand, kalau dia datang dia nak marah kita je, so they are not ready lah, maknanya. Okay, so sama juga, when you want to negotiate with someone, from the very beginning, you dah kena bagi tahu there are some certain things that we want to share, our our budget, our um, restriction, uh, you kena cerita tu. Okay, mungkin bila you bercerita dengan your customers tu, you have to tell them as well. Okay, sekarang ni kita nak negotiation, this is what uh, we are looking into. Sebab kalau bila dia tak faham, features ni tak 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 clear, itu yang negotiation tak berjaya. Sebab dua-dua pihak tak betul-betul tahu 
Why are we having this negotiation at the first place? Make sense. And then it doesn't uh, selalunya saya faham ya, bila you jadi middle person, middle person tapi kalau you ada authority untuk buat decision, then you have the right to be there. If you are the middle person just as the messenger, you akan jadi uh, tempat untuk orang baling target je kat you. Sebab you hanya taking information. You are not there to negotiate. Make sense? You hanya menyampaikan maklumat. Mengikut kata syarikat kita, okay, Okay, syarikat cakap macam ni. So, apa yang syarikat you boleh buat, you pun tak boleh buat apa-apa. Ah, That's why negotiation tu tak berjaya. Ya, yeah? Itu pada pandangan saya. But let's just stop here. Okay. So, starting from now. When you would like to negotiate with anybody, even with yourself ni, you kena tahu kenapa you negotiate dengan diri you. Ah, yeah? uh, All these features have to be here. If not, negotiation tu tak complete. Bila tak complete, you tak akan dapat result yang you inginkan. Tu maksud dia, goal tu tadi eh. Okay, but then again, one thing for sure, you are dealing with people. So, uh, they will be, they adventurous sikit lah. Eh, huh? Not all the time clear cut. Okay, uh, you need negotiate dengan your pets pun is not easy. Huh? Macam-macam nak kena bagi snack, treats, baru dia ikut kan. Huh? Okay, uh, with that, we're going to stop.